how to track and monitor your progress. What we measure, we tend to improve. So for someone who wants to gain size, they're following our gainers program. They see four sets of six, let's say, on the barbell back squat. Now, how can we progressively overload that four sets of six? If it's the same training volume, 24 reps, we can reduce the rest period between our sets. We can increase the time under tension, right? So let's just say, example, four sets of six, they did one week one, and they did it a two-minute rest in between sets. And their time under tension was two seconds on the way down for the squat, no pause at the bottom, and then they drive up as fast as they can. So it was about four to five seconds rep. So around 30 to 40 seconds, let's say, for each set. Let's say we keep the rest period the same over week two. Um, so you're still resting that two minutes, but you increase your time and attention on the eccentric portion. We're really stretching uh, the muscles. It's going to elicit some good muscle breakage, which is going to uh, help with our adaptation for hypertrophy. So we don't have to always think lift heavier, heavier, heavier. If you're moving the same weights, but faster, you're improving your maximum force. Another way that you can do it is obviously the weight that you're putting in for each set. So let's say with this particular goal, we're working on plateau loading. So every set is the same weight. So you might need probably two sets to warm up. Typically, I recommend warm up the bar, groove. So let's say you go for 10 reps, nice and smooth. You might do a bit of mobility in between that set. First working set today, we're going to work at 80 kilos. So we work out 80 kilos. We're going to do 24 reps of that. You get your calculator out, 24 times 80. So we're lifting 1,920 kilos. Week two, we're doing the same time and attention. You're resting the same amount. This time, you're going to lift 100 kilos for four sets of six. So that's an increase of 500 kilos over that set. So that's your tonnage. And that's how I like to progressively overload their volume for those that are wanting to increase their muscle size. Nutrition. It'd be remiss of me if I didn't mention nutrition. If you want to gain muscle, that's critical. Seek a dietitian. Follow people like Ben Parker, Jess Spenlarth on Instagram and book a consultation with them. It's money well paid for and, and I guarantee that will help uh, supplement the training program. Ultimately, we've got to put the stress on the body. So there's no point investing all this money on supplements, dietitian, lifestyle, all these things if we're not stressing the body to adapt the the body simply needs the stress under the, the body. Otherwise, the body's smart, it's efficient, and it won't carry extra muscle mass that it needs for survival, right? It's not thinking about football performance, the human body. It's thinking about what's, what do we need for survival, and excess muscle mass is not necessary. Uh, it's expensive, actually. It costs energy to, to hold onto muscle mass. So unless you're stressing the body, i.e. lifting more volume in the gym, um, then you won't be uh, gaining muscle mass. Uh, you'll be losing muscle mass. So first we need to get that program in place. Then you need the nutrition to support that training goal to, to maximize your adaptation. So make sure you get onto that. Uh, I've got some free, so if you just Google like AFL nutritional fueling advice, some free advice there. As I mentioned with our caddy members, make sure to check out Ben Parker's masterclass that he did with us last year. That's, you can check out those uh, modules in our academy when you log in. Number three, running volume. I recently had Dean Ritchie on. He did his PhD, the Gold Coast Suns, and they found for players, developing players, that where they needed to maximize their hypertrophy. It was around that. They had like 20 to 25 Ks. They limited their running volumes too. So they had one less football session a week. And they really closely monitored that running exposure because what they found is that had that extra running volume, it was really hard to put mass on their lower body. Upper body was different. Upper body was able to to sustain it's probably largely to do with my fourth point the interference effect so they also looked at time between field session and gym sessions and it was significant when you look at let's say you go from let's say you're training in the off season you, you start with your running session and then your gym's 30 minutes around the corner you drive to your gym you smack out your gym session if we looked at your tonnage that would be significantly down uh, and if we looked at the velocity that you're moving the bar, that would be snipped down and how heavy you can lift the bar. So the three key areas of gym performance and to maximize your football uh, adaptations, that's a, the benefits that we want to get out of strength training, they're all negatively affected um, when you have a short time from field to gym. So if you want to gain size, if you want to get stronger, if you want to be more explosive, you really can't be doing your field session straight into your gym session. You want to space those out minimum four hours to limit that interference effect, which is simply just a term of if you're adapting the body with an aerobic stimulus 
and then you're asking it for more anaerobic stimulus like strength training and power training, there's an interference effect. 